What's up Magic Lantern users? Uh, I'm here to do a short overview of how I utilize RAW and uh, you know convert the files and make it usable from your camera. Uh, my setup is a T5i or 700D if you're in the UK and as you know that camera is probably the most tricky to get clean RAW resolution out of so I'm going to show you a video and some comparisons between uh, standard compression out of the Rebel by itself uh, and what it looks like if I shoot raw with it and uh, we're just gonna go from there. Currently I'm using the autofocus feature that is native on the T5i and it's tracking my face uh, pretty well. I mean it's not the greatest but it works for this and uh, there's no uh, Magic Lantern installed on the SD card, and I'm going to do a short clip of uh, raw footage so you can compare it to the same studio setting that I have right now, and I'm going to switch over right now. So this is where the audio gets cut. Um, it's split on Magic Lantern, and I was having issues syncing it up because I didn't do it in... Uh, after Effects, but I'm just explaining what equipment I was using, which is a Canon T5i and the kit lens, which is 18 to 55. And I did this because I wanted to show the quality of a uh, kit lens straight out of the box and help the people who are trying to improve their camera quality without having to buy a new lens. Also, I'm just kind of covering things that I was talking about earlier in the clip, but I'm going to switch back over to the other clip with uh, just standard compression out of the camera and have this clip also play in the same frame so you could see side by side what it looks like. Okay, so as you can see from that footage, there is a difference and you'll be able to see in the the upcoming footage that there is a difference in the quality and though it's not like a huge difference it does make make or break your uh, your image quality I would say that the image coming out of this camera off the showroom is very good and it's it's crisp enough for YouTube and online sources and things like that and uh, the compression is fine for what it is I wouldn't really, I wouldn't really suggest trying to utilize RAW unless you were really, um, really focusing on filmmaking or you have a business that is uh, based on your image quality. So, if you're shooting with a Rebel and you want better image quality, then shooting in RAW is a good way to go. And uh, right now we could get pretty good results from it. Uh, I'll I'll do a video of my my uh, production and uh, converting all my files for you if you're interested because uh, the T5i or the 700D has some quirks that uh, none of the other Canon cameras really have, which is unfortunate. It's called like uh, well it's just uh, focus pixels or hot pixels and it makes a pink. Uh, pink grid line appear in your images if they're overexposed so you'll see that in one of the videos I actually did this on purpose I overexposed and you could see that there's pink pixels in the uh, uh, really overexposed areas and um, it doesn't really happen if if there's no uh, parts of the image that might create more eh? for one and even more so if you have an image that's overexposed and has uh, a pattern that's going to produce more A, you're definitely going to be getting those pink pixels. So try to stay away from that kind of stuff if you're shooting in RAW. I know it's hard, but there's no fix for it right now for the T5i or the... I think the T4i is the same, so there's not a, a, there's not a one time fix for these things. You can go in and like fix it if you're good at coding and programming, but I'm not. I, I could figure out what I can from the, the forums, and I can, if I want to, 
put the time into learning these kind of things, but it's something that I don't want to waste my energy on, and I'd rather just uh, be able to go shoot a film and, you know, make it and edit it and have it be finished. So, uh, I'll show you the videos now. Uh, what I was going to say is, I don't think that the, the raw image, image from the Rebel is uh, something that's going to, or the raw file from Magic Lantern, rather. I don't think it's going to be around for a long time, but for the next couple of years it will still be relevant. Um, it's something that the new cameras on in the industry that aren't Canon are, you know, really offering easy access to really crisp imagery. So, uh, first and foremost, and most, I guess, most importantly, I would say that mm -hmm. I would avoid trying to uh, run a professional business with like a, a Canon camera, unless it's the 5D Mark III because that, that's a very stable camera with uh, Magic Lantern RAW. But if you're trying to um, produce professional cuts with a lower end Rebel series or even like the 70D or something, I, I would recommend not even buying the camera for the reason that it has RAW capabilities. I would go ahead and find a camera that shoots a a more crisp image on a better sensor because um, from my experience I've learned that it's a lot more difficult to find workarounds and uh, process the the raw images after you've already shot it and you can't even really uh, view it on the camera you have to you have to really know what you're looking for and honestly it really it really does uh, show you how well of a camera operator you are because you can't with the the rebel cameras you can't really um, mess up with the raw image you can't really there's no way of seeing what you're shooting and there's a small margin of exposing that um, you could use with it so uh, check out the images and let me know if you see a difference and if you think that it's worth the, you know, the time and effort that you need to get those more crisp images because the raw is definitely more crisp and uh, forgive me for rubbing my nose. Um, and also I, I actually color graded the um, raw images in After Effects and I do apologize for that because it does show a little bit more contrast and makes it look like a better image, but there is um, two videos that I'll put that are not color graded and you could still tell that there's a huge difference in them so um, I'll go ahead and show those and thanks for watching uh, and if you have any questions or concerns just shoot them in the comments and let me know how you like the video so far. Thank you. So it's hard to tell that these two are shot any differently because there's so many uh, artifacts and noise in the details and it's probably due to the way that I um, exported this from After Effects so please let me know if you guys have any idea how to preserve better details because the bottom is raw and it shows more artifacts than the top which is standard from the 700D and I actually prefer the top uh, compared to the bottom and I'm kind of I'm just kind of new to shooting raw on this thing, so if you have any ideas, please just let me know. In this clip, you can see that there is some uh, better detail in the bottom, which is the raw as well, and it's kind of easier to understand that the, the shadows are holding more details in this picture. I'm not sure if it's just uh, raw is really tricky with exposing and lighting I'm I mean I'm I've heard through uh, the forums on Magic Lantern that it is pretty uh, tricky to get it perfect but um, on this shot you could see, you could definitely see a difference now I tried to uh, color correct the standard 
video file from the 700D on the top to match because I, I color corrected from After Effects before I dropped it into uh, Premiere to edit. In this clip, uh, it's kind of the same as the first. You can see uh, some noise and artifacts in the shadows over on that cliff. And on the top, which is standard, uh, it actually looks like it has more detail, though it's you know sh uh, softer. It does look a little bit better. And again, I'm not sure if this is due to the compression method that I use to export my DNGs from After Effects. But if you guys have any idea of how to uh, produce a better image, please uh, let me know. And We'll definitely help each other out if you could do that. Following up with this one, we have a, 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 a better representation of what RAW can do, in my opinion. We could definitely tell that there is more detail up in the left-hand corner, top left, of the bottom half. Uh, it just looks like there is much more detail in that uh, sandy area with the shells. and. I do believe that this is picking up much more detail than the top, which is standard compression. Um, I'm not sure why, because I used the same lens for the previous two uh, videos and uh, exposed them correctly, so I'm not sure if it was just the, you know, the lighting was better or something. Uh, but it just looks a lot better in my opinion and let me know what you think uh, the video following this is actually one of the biggest issues with the camera it's the the overexposing hot pixels or pink dots and I'm actually using um, let's see mystic MLV mystic to handle this with the chroma smoothing and it takes out most of it in regular images, but whenever you overexpose like this, it uh, causes a pink dot, which will show up here pretty soon. I froze it, and right in the middle of the screen, you can see that dot. Um, but, you know, that's something you just have to work with. Okay, so in this clip, uh, we have a side by side comparison that is uh, very good. Uh, on the left they have the raw file and on the right I have the uh, standard compression with CineStyle profile and I didn't uh, color correct or process this after I shot it's just straight out of the camera and you can see how much detail there is in the raw file now there is some uh, downfalls with the raw file you get a lot more uh, artifacts and chromatic aberrations up in the tree line that's only if you're shooting something that is very tight clusters and uh, you know prone to moray patterns so it's not something that you should be uh, stressed about too much because as a filmmaker you're kind of trying to avoid that kind of stuff anyways so you wouldn't really shoot this image like this you would try to find a different angle so that that wasn't as apparent and um, Though the the standard compression is definitely usable, I would definitely I would definitely say that the raw file has a win over the standard. And uh, if you think that my images have helped you out, just let me know. If you have any questions regarding my processing and uh, conversions for the 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 raw files out of Magic Lantern, then just shoot them in the comments, and I'll be sure to get back with you. Uh, again, thanks for watching, and hope this helped you out.